So if you have your bulletin card, would you take a moment now? We want to make sure you get that bulletin card going on. Take notes. Make sure you jump into a life group because life groups kind of wrap up for the holidays this month. And how many also have what we're calling 21 Days of Gratitude Challenge? So you should have both. And you can see mine's already started to fill out. We're going to explain that in just a moment. Let's get Bible attendance. How many have their Bible here? Huh? You at home? Great. All right. Electronic apps certainly do help. Praise the Lord for that. Well, hey, we are going to begin our series. Our series is called A Grateful Hotspot in My Heart. We're going to be taking a look at some things that we're believing the miraculous is going to really start in your lives and surrounding environments that you influence. But let's begin because we really can't do anything without the Lord. So, Father, thank you for your goodness. And already the privilege we have to enjoy you with each other's company and also, Lord, just the miraculous. Anything's possible with you. Your word says that. So, Lord, thank you for moving us into a perfect setting so we can experience the impossible but only it's possible with you. Lord, thank you for your word and the timeliness of all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I know many of you, the privilege of being a pastor, you get a chance to just see and understand when people are going through issues like raging rivers kind of stuff. So I'm going to just start off with I heard a good story about these three men that came across raging river. And the first man said, oh, Lord, he started praying Give me the strength to swim this river. And poof, these guns came out and big legs. And he swam across the river in two hours. And seeing what happened, the second guy got courageous. And he said, oh, Lord, give me the strength and the tools to go across that river. And poof, there was a rowboat. So he rowed right across that river in 30 minutes. So the third man says, oh, Lord, give me the strength, the tools, and the intelligence across that river, and poof, there he was, a woman. And she looked down at the map, went five minutes upstream and crossed the bridge. <laughs> so you just never know when you ask how it's like, wow, how come life is so much simpler when we bring things to God's attention? And he's going to do just that. We're going to start with our first, first part of our series, as you can see on your notes, Growing a Grateful Hot Spot in your heart. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I basically am a pretty positive person, but I think we can all get kind of sucked into just people that would cause us to just be grouchy or complain and find a negative time. I don't know about you, when I'm in a rush and I'm driving off to get someplace quickly, I find I always get behind a person that doesn't even drive the speed limit. It's like, <laughs> or the next thing, I'm working on a home project, and I'm now going to the eighth time to the hardware store. <laughs> Things can change the environment quickly. Or recently, in line to buy some groceries, and I'm suckered into complaining about the price of produce and things. So you just never know. But what we're taking a look at here the idea of a hot spot, we're wanting to take a challenge where we would consider 21 days of our card and filling out an item that would naturally be addressed toward the Lord. Now, I'm helping you by saying, for me, today, November 5th, is the cross. Now, it could be something much simpler than that, like just some extra dog food that you found lying around the house. Who knows? but it's attributed to the Lord. And it's going to be important that we get a chance to start to see what we're going to believe, tremendous power that comes when we are grateful to God. There is no power in complaining. I have discovered that my circumstances change, but God never changes. My circumstances at times can be bad, but God is always good. And it's amazing when we start to trust him and believe for things, how that if we are understanding who the Lord is, the more we realize who he is and relate to him in our relationship with the Lord, that 
we find is a much more easy approach to saying, Lord, I trust you, I'm grateful. We're going to see, we're going to see that. If we do not really understand the Lord, then often people find that their thanksgiving to God is tied with their favorable circumstance. So may the Lord move us beyond that, and we start to see some great things. So it's November. We're leading into Thanksgiving, and may the Lord help us. How? Let's take a look at our notes. Number one, gratitude is God's will for your life. It's an obvious thing. Most of us are aware of that, but let's let the Scripture speak to us. I'm in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You who are at home, man, make notes, would you? God could speak to something about your situation that you say, wow, that is worth my time and investment around the word of the Lord. It's like a good meal. It's like a good meal. Man, it's the high watermark of every Christian. We not only enjoy eating, but how about the word of the Lord when he starts to speak something specifically to us? So 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Be thankful in all circumstances, For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ. Do we have some Christ followers here? It's important that you and I understand God's will. And if you always wonder what God's will would be for your life, to be thankful in every circumstance, not for. I have a hard time ever saying I'm thankful for that bad stuff. But in the midst of it, that's where the power is. That's what we're talking about. We're taking a look. Take with me now letter A. Learn to be thankful is not an optional quality. Learning to be thankful. And once again, as we look here, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 says this. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Always. That, that really is not an option. You can see there, if you see in the word, it really is a command. The quality that characterizes followers of Jesus is that we are grateful in situations regardless. But this one's saying, always be thankful. How could that possibly be? How is that even possible? Honestly, I've been around a lot of people lately, and we take a look at the chaos that's happening in our nation, chaos that's happening globally, the situation of just seems like there's a lot more evil that's happening, and we could all get sucker punched into complaining. It's very difficult to be always thankful. It's important, and somebody might be saying, Well, is God just wanting us to bury our head in the sand and just kind of ignore what's going on? No, no, no. We need to be aware of things, but we're talking about really developing a hot spot in our heart of gratitude to the Lord. Letter B says the foundation of thankfulness is God, not circumstances. And I underlined, you can see there, is God. It's important. This really is the game changer here to be thankful in all circumstances we saw. But if you take a look here at Psalm 106, verse 1. I'm in the New Living Translation. If you've got another translation, you go ahead, mark your Bible up. But the verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his faithfulness or faithful love endures forever. When you look here, Probably our barrier with being thankful lies in our thinking. And it comes right down to that, to realize what God has done. Really, if you don't know the Lord, boy, I hope you can get a chance to discover who he is today. If you don't know the Lord, then your thankful heart is always going to be predicated on favorable circumstances. Wouldn't it be great that, man, I know God. He's faithful. Though what I'm going through right now is not very good, I'm going to maintain an attitude that says, Lord, I know you're going to come through for me. So when I remember the foundation of my thankful heart is really grounded in who God is, boy, that would really help us to say, I need to know more of him. I need to get into the word and discover who he is and enjoy that. Because I believe, I believe God loves me. I know you believe that too, but man, when I start to see in my relationship that God is always good, 
that God is always faithful, that God always uses everything for good, that I'm convinced that in his thinking about me is always for my best, I start to get really excited. I don't like what I'm going through or experience, and I've had a boatload of those. But I work through and say, no, Lord, I want to thank you because I recognize that every event will work out for a good purpose. Man, and I'm telling you, those are pressing days that happen, but it happens at a relational element with you and God, and it's going to be important for us. So, in the reasons that God would encourage us on, even when our heart is broken, it's going to be important. Lord, I want to thank you in the midst of that. Let's take a look. Let's go a little bit further as we lay this groundwork in our 21 days of gratitude. Number two on your notes, gratitude is a choice, not an emotion. And letter A, as you can see there in your notes, choose to be thankful. It's a choice. In Psalm chapter 50, verse 14, make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you made to the Most High. That word make, that's a choice. I'm going to make something today. What are you going to make? I'm going to make thankfulness my sacrifice to God. When you make something of a sacrifice, that means, you know, there's nothing really in me that's feeling ready to give gratitude, but I am making a choice to be thankful. It's just like love. It's sure nice to just fall in love, and it's easy to fall in love, but man, people get married, and then all of a sudden they ask this question, why don't we love each other like we used to? Love is really a choice. It's an important thing. And thankfulness, gratitude is a choice as well. I love my wife. I make a choice that I will watch a Hallmark movie instead of watching Monday Night Football. That is, that's love. (laughs) Honey, again, okay, I will watch a holiday Christmas movie in July (laughs) instead of watching Gladiator. Oh, That's a choice. And when we take a look at choosing to be thankful, even when I don't feel like it, man, that's a sacrifice. That is a sacrifice. Isn't it nice to give God something that you know really is meaningful? Let her be on your notes. Sometimes being thankful is a sacrifice. And it really is. Take a look in Psalm 107, verse 22. It says this, Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. Take a look at that. That element, sometimes when we really are hurting to be thankful, oh my goodness. Have you seen that with people when they're still thankful? Gut-wrenching issues are going on, and there's just something about their sweet nature to say, Lord, I'm just still going to thank you. So all of a sudden, why would God say, make a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Why would that be? You and I understand this, that when we're hurting and things are not feeling well, often our eyes are on the circumstances. And gratitude starts to turn us back to really where we should be gauging and looking toward. It's really the Lord. That's the beauty of thanking the Lord. God, where can we find help? And I'll tell you, oftentimes, start it with just thanking him. Now, it's beautiful to have a body of believers that have a faith family because the Bible says we're to bear one another's burdens, pray with each other. That's great. Usually when we hit issues, our prayer is, Almighty God, alleviate the pain we're going through. It's a good prayer. But wouldn't it be great to offer that sacrifice? Lord, I know this is going to turn out to be to your glory. It's wonderful. So offering a sacrifice of thanksgiving is to refuse to allow despair to wrap itself around your heart and your attitude. It's an amazing thing. That's where the power starts to come in. That's where the influence starts to happen. Something's unique about a person that starts to say, out of my relationship with you, Lord Jesus, I'm going to thank you. I know this is going to turn out well. Number three, gratitude makes us a witness to others. You take a look at that. 
We're going to be seeing some things in these weeks ahead. And we're believing that the power of God is going to flow through your efforts to say, Lord, here's my gratitude to you this very day. Letter A, when we complain, we damage our witness to the world. Let's just start with that because that's a reminder. Here we're just trying to say, let's gaze onto God with thanksgiving because of who we know he is. But what if we don't? What if we don't? Something starts to fall apart. There is no power in complaining. If you look here for a moment now, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, where it says, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clear, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. I'll tell you, a person that just has a good attitude is really going to stand out. Have you seen the elements of people's personalities lately? I mean, there is some real hostile environments that are happening. I'm finding people are laying on their horns more and longer on the highway. It's like, wow, that, what happened there? So when we take a look here, complaining is the opposite of being thankful. So if you and I can just take a look and say, you know what, for this Thanksgiving, I'm going to choose a hot spot in my heart to be grateful because I don't want to complain. Complaining is really demonstrating a faithless approach. Really shows that there's no confidence that God's going to come through. Boy, that'd be dreadful. I really, I re- my heart breaks for people that can't see anything good out of issues of pain or disappointment. Because anybody can complain. It really takes no skill in complaining. Have you found that out? You don't have to train to complain. It's not that... Big of an issue to some people. Matter of fact, it shows that they very probably, it comes natural, but they lack maturity. We're talking about, Lord, I want to grow up. Where shall I begin? Well, to give gratitude to the Lord. But I do find complaining, it's a real issue. When it comes to complaining, probably nothing causes a disruption to the advancement of the kingdom of God like people that would complain. It really harms that person's witness to the world. It really harms that person's, really, the testimony of their church. And it really, really puts a mark on Jesus in a negative way because people complain. You know, when a person complains, they don't care about people. They don't care and they complain, and it really kind of tears people down. People that complain, have you found that out? They're self-centered. It's all about how... I feel that's why I'm bringing this to your attention. People that complain, all of a sudden, they don't want to help and correct the problem. There's a difference between a person that complains and a person that brings an issue of a complaint, says, you know, why don't we consider doing it this way? Well, that's pretty good. I like that. Problem solver. Person that just complains, that always lays the blame on other people as the problem. Boy, that's really a terrible... They have this gift of fault-finding, and we have to be real careful about that when we see how a person could easily go into complaining, and complaining never sees God in the circumstance. That's probably the most dreadful. Why? Because that person that's complaining really has an attitude of hopelessness. They really don't think the issue is going to get any better. Boy, but God has better for us as followers of him. That's why it's so important. But we forget that often the greatest witness that we have is often not so much what we say, but it's our action, is it not? It really is, isn't it? I think that when people come along and say, listen, if that is the way a Christian acts, I don't want anything to do with that church. Can you imagine people that might, as we do, feed the homeless? And people see you out there, and then later on the supermarket line that person is complaining about something they say whoa if that's what that jesus is all about i don't want anything to do with that so that's why as the scripture is saying be careful oh be careful it's going to mar your reputation and really bring some criticism 
letter B, when we are thankful, we stand out like lights in a dark world. I like that one. That really is a noteworthy one. Let's look here at Philippians chapter 4, 14, chapter, excuse me, 2, verse 14. It says once again, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Boy, you can sure tell when a person has a good spirit about them. Something's really obvious when they just are walking with a good attitude. But when the world observes us being thankful, despite the circumstances, oh, dear friends, who knows that the painful conditions you may have been through or currently going through, that people are looking to see how you're going to respond and react. What a witness that you would say, I'm still trusting and thanking God. That is powerful. Who knows? If that is the lone condition, he's going to bring that victory and maybe big-time healing just around the corner. But there's a few more people that need to hear your heart of gratitude toward the Lord. Man, that just knocks a person right in the peepers when they witness that kind of action. So I li- I've had a few people over the years ask me this, say, what makes you so high on life, Paul? <laughs> I like that. And it isn't pharmaceutical. It's Jesus. And so I remember a while back when we purchased the Christian Science Church when we pastored in Vanny, and we had the ribbon-cutting ceremony. We opened it up, what we called the youth center. That people donated indoor basketballs. We had bumper pool. It was a lot of fun. But we had the first responders there, the mayor, some of the community council that was there. And I remember persons asking me, Paul, why are you so happy? (laughs) What makes you so happy with life? What is it that makes you high? Isn't that amazing? Because in that area, it was predominantly some heavy-duty stuff going on in our community. And I got a chance to tell them, Jesus, it wasn't about what was happening with structure and building. It was with Jesus. Well, I'm telling you, people can come along and ask us, what makes us so high on life? Wouldn't that be great to be that kind of happy because of God and our relationship? Please don't let, don't allow, don't let your life be relegated to circumstances. Good, yay, bad, bummer. Let's let God be that source of gratitude. Number four, let's take a look. Gratitude affects what we experience with God. Gratitude affects. And let's just start with a negative element. Letter A, complaining invites God's loving correction. Let's just think about that for a moment. Let's think we don't respond properly when we should, and we go off into complaining. Let's just say you parents, grandparents, remember those days when your children would not respond properly and complain, a simple little directive? Wouldn't that cause a loving... Correction, praise the Lord. What if that never happens? Then those loving little children grow up and become chronic complainers. That's not a good thing. Those chronic complainers, all of a sudden, and it might work today for some. They complain, and it might move their marriage. It might move things in work It might work with their friends to complain, to get them to motivate them to do something, but it doesn't move God. And you might want to think a different way of just going at your relationship with the Lord. Let's take a look at some things in Scripture. In James chapter 5, it says, Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, we're talking to Christians, or you'll be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Now, it's a serious caution. You and I might say, ah, well, we're all under grace. I'll tell you, it's important you are very careful about what we say about the church of Jesus. I remember when God chastised me back in Banning. I was complaining about the Baptist church. 
And I remember the Lord used Isaiah 54, 17. No, well, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every voice that rises up against you, you shall judge. For this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And the Lord says, Paul, you have become a weapon against that church, and you will not prosper. I'm telling you, that sobered me up. And I changed my attitude about that church. I did not want to not prosper. I wanted to be one that blesses even my enemies. Lord, I thank you for that. And even to this day, I'm probably the quickest to issue an apology because I still stumble in many ways, and one is with my words. So all words are powerful. Words are powerful. And if you can capture something today and say, man, I am going to express gratitude. There's always something that I can engage God with with gratitude. It's like a pebble in the water. It ripples. And you will see the power of God start to move mightily. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7, let's check that out. It says, this is why the Holy Spirit says today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled, when they tested me in the wilderness. Now, let's take a look here, just a moment here, because I'm trying to move us beyond being like everybody else in the world that complains. I don't want to be like that. Everybody, that's, no, that's a no issue when it comes to people that are not born again, but for those who are born again, that's important for us. To complain is really a faithless response. It really is. To complain is the Lord. And what that really is saying is that it really is an assault against the very character of God. I don't trust God. He's not good. He won't care for me. And when Israel did that, issues ensued. Now, I remember first reading all those 11 big-time complaints in the nation of Israel. Here they just came out of Captivity, they came out of Egypt. They were slaves for four, 400 years. Now, I'm telling you, 400 years of slavery would make anybody a chronic complainer. Isn't that true? Huh? Not like this. But God had a better thing as their way to the promised land. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 24, just a couple of verses just to gaze at. Then the people complained and turned against Moses. What are we going to drink? They demanded. Just an issue. One of Let's go just a little bit further in chapter 16, verse 2. It says, There too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. It's an amazing thing how you start to so easily. I have been captivated by complaining, and they're so right. It's like, wow, I, I'm going to help be a voice to them too. And I realize, ah, oh, I feel sick. Something of the Holy Spirit in me just feels like that is not your place. I like the element, too, when God starts to speak. And it's in Exodus 17, verse 2, it says, So once more the people complained against Moses, Give us water to drink. They demanded, Quiet, Moses replied. Why are you complaining against me, and why are you testing the Lord? So when we take a look, it's going to be important for us to recognize what moves the hand of God. It really is to say, Lord, I just trust you. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God who followed Jesus. It's going to be important for us. I like the fact that we look at letter B as we wrap our last point up. Thankfulness invites God's loving blessing. That is where I want us all to go. That's where I want you to go. If you don't have this card, you can certainly write down things that you have this hot spot in your heart to thank God for. But I like Psalm 50, Psalm 50, verse 23, and that is on our 21 days of gratitude challenge. But it says, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. And if you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. 
want to just encourage you, if some of you are just uncertain about what's going on and will there ever come a day certain issues end or their breakthrough comes, I believe God's word. He'll show us the salvation. In this setting, it's much, much, much more than just getting us all to glory. Even in the Greek, it's that word sozo. It's the full benefit of being saved. Everything about God is redemptive, healing, and whole. I think if you say to yourself and to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to be a person that walks giving thanks as a sacrifice, God says, man, you're truly honoring me. I don't want my life, I don't want any form of complaining. Now, it's a work because to me, that's an area where I am doubting God's ability and it's a slant against his character. I know the Lord. I love him. Oh, he's been so good. And the song we sang, The Goodness of God, boy, that song carried me through when we were all going through things a couple of years ago during the pandemic. Man, was the Lord good. He's still good today. There are issues that are going on in your society, my society. If we're not careful, you'll get suckered into that this is the worst of days. Man, I'm telling you, this is the best of days. And you're a part of it. Aren't we privileged to live in the day and age that we're living? I mean, any relay race, the best runners are at the end of the race. They're the ones that kick it up a notch and make sure the team wins the race. You are those end time saints, glory to God. You're the ones that are gonna be the ones that show people God exists. It's gonna be important, it's gonna be vital that you don't allow the environment of the world pull you into a mold that you're not able to hear from the Lord lately saying, Paul, that's not my posture and that's not the way I want you to go. So on 21 days, we get a chance. You know, we often talk, obedience equals blessing. Man, if you really feel God's wanting you to be a more person filled with gratitude, I'm telling you, we're going to really be celebrating some breakthroughs. Remember, there's no power in complaining. The power is when you are grateful to God. And just one little hot spot for that day will give a great breakthrough. Let's take a look at that card and make sure you have one of those. If you can, why don't you write us and we'll send one of these to you. Let's go ahead. Even today, what is that one thing? We say, why did we make a card out? I can do that anyway. I'll tell you, it takes a while to start to make a shift, what we call a habit. If you don't start to apply that, you'll probably forget even this message by the time you go to bed tonight. But if you wake up and say, man, I am going to focus in on the Lord, you start to see 21 different things, why you are so grateful. Man, if your attitude adjusts, if the environment of the Holy Spirit is pleased because you are enveloping an attitude of worship, things are going to happen. I believe that. God will show you the salvation of the Lord. And people will say, man, man, what makes you so high on life? <laughs> Let me pull out my 21 days. Here we go. Let's stand to our feet. Would you take a moment now? Let me pray for you. Father, we want to thank you. We are so grateful for the way that you work in our lives. And even now, even now, for our dear friends that are gathering across state lines, Lord, we're believing that you're going to start to move in their heart and they're going to see things that we all need to see. That God, in our relationship with him, really brings a great, great breakthrough. Oh, Lord, even now, start to bring the miraculous. Allow us to see where we need to make the change, especially in our thinking. And Lord, like you have in so many ways, forgiven me from being an easy complainer, addressing things that have been wrong. Lord, I thank you for your repenting approach, allowing me to experience just the forgiveness and the washing and renewing by your word. Oh, by your word. So Lord, take hold 
of that sweet blood of Jesus that you're going to allow just like the blood on the doorpost, that death angel just flies right over us, does no impact whatsoever. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. And if you're with me right now, would you go ahead and just repeat this prayer with me, both here and you or at home or in the break room. Simple prayer goes like this. Dear Jesus, I acknowledge to you I haven't given you much credit and I change my approach to thank you more often. I acknowledge today that I choose you as my Savior. Thank you for washing me clean, forgiving me of all my sins. Help me now, dear Lord, to see where you're working to say where you're working, that others would see you in my life. Let the Holy Spirit now come and fill me full. I can't do it by myself. But may everything that happens in my life moving forward bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today at Hope Chapel Huntington Beach. It's our desire to bring the teachings of this church to others globally. If today's message has brought you closer to Jesus, we want to know. Can you send us an email to office at hopechapelhb.org? Would you consider supporting this ministry financially? You can give securely online at hopechapelhb.org slash give. If a check is your preferred method, you can send a mailed check to Hope Chapel, P.O. Box 548, Huntington Beach, California, 92648. If you want to be contacted by Hope Chapel, would you consider subscribing to our weekly newsletters at Hope Chapel? hb.org slash subscribe. Whatever season of life you're in, we want to go through it with you. We want to thank you once again for joining us, and God bless you.